Let's take a look at compiling multiple files uh, with a header file on the Linux system. So I've logged in and I've changed my directory to my multi-file project. Let's take a look at what's inside of my two source code files. I have uh, function1 and function2 and then I have header.h and then I have main.cpp. So let's take a look at what's inside of the files. So if I say cat function1.cpp, I can see that there's just a, a simple function in there called add them. And I have a pound include for header.h. Now let's take a look at um, function2. That one just has another function called sub them. Um, and you can probably guess that main.cpp is going to be calling those two functions, add them and sub them. So let's take a look at main.cpp. Okay, so pretty simple function. It also includes the header.h uh, library, or not library, header file right there. And then um, I'm just calling add them right here and then sub them right there. Okay. In order to compile a multi-file uh, project on the um, command line, you just list the files um, in order that you want them to be compiled. So <clears throat> let me list the directory one more time. And so if I'd like to compile all of those into a program, I can just list them all out on the command line. Okay, so main.cpp function 1 and then I want it to be um, called so dash O I just want it to be called program you can see that I've already compiled it once before but it won't hurt to do it again um, notice that I did not put header dot H on the command line and that's because it's included in our source code files okay so that's how you can um, compile a multi-file um, project on Linux. Sometimes Linux projects can have many, many uh, source code files. And um, so if we just changed one file, then um, we would have to list all of the files um, in, the, in the compilation. So let's say we had 15 different source code files in our project, then it would be really tedious to have to list out all of the files to compile. We do have ways to duplicate our commands though. I mean, I can hit the up arrow key and then, and then compile it that way. Um, but there's one other drawback to having to um, recompile all of your source code files. If your project gets large, then it will take um, a long time to compile every single one of your source code files. And so what you can do is you can, um, you can compile your source code files into object files. So basically what that means is that you can compile your source code files but not link them. So your source code files won't be linked into a, an executable program. Okay, in order to do that, uh, for example, if we just wanted to compile main.cpp into, a, um, into a, an object file, I can just do dash c main.cpp. Okay, now if I list again, I can see that I have main.o right there. So um, that means that it's an object file. And so if I try to list it, so if I do cat main.o, I'm basically going to get gibberish. Um, and that's because it's, it's machine language now. Um, it's going to be uh, linked together with other object files so that um, it, it, will, it will create an executable program. So if I were to continue to do this, then I would create an object file for function two and function one. So let's say I only made a change to function one.cpp. 
then um, I could link it with my main.o and my function 2.cpp, uh, or I'm sorry, function 2 object file, and then that would speed things up by quite a bit. So basically what I'm getting at here is that this is pre-compiled. Um, so if I anything that I link with it doesn't have to be compiled again. It just has to be linked with it. Okay, so I could do that with um, with my other source code files, but there's an even easier way to uh, to automatically take care of all this stuff using a program called Make. And so let's go ahead and remove the main.o file, and let's take a look at the Make file that we have that I've already created. So cat Make file. We can see that the first thing in the make file is all, and that's by tradition. So basically, we could name this first label anything we wanted to, but by tradition it's called all. And um, so if I just type make on the command line like this, if I invoke the make program, it's going to look inside of the current directory to find the make file there. So make is a program which will automatically look for and um, basically execute the commands inside of the make file file right there. So that's how make works. And if I don't specify any command line arguments on here uh, after make, then it will automatically um, invoke the first target right here. So um, these are called targets. Basically what we want is for, if, if I don't provide anything, it will automatically um, target all, and, and so it will invoke program. And so the way it works is that um, it keeps track of the times that the files were created here. So, so we have July 11th at um, 1828, and then, okay, so then we have some older files here. So basically, make keeps track of these times here. And so if it notices that there's been a change in, in one of the timestamps for the files, then it knows that we've updated one of the files. And so it goes ahead and it recompiles just that one file. Um, OK, so let's get back to our make file here. So basically what we have is a target and then and then um, the target will look for these other items inside of the um, the current directory so if the target is program then it will take a look and, and see do we have a main.o do we have a function 1.0 and and do we have a function 2.0 and remember that those are the object files if the answer is no for any of those, then it will look for a target for any one of these. So let's say we don't have a main.o in our, in our current directory. What it does is it looks for a target somewhere down the line to, to try and fulfill the requirement that, that's on this target line right there. So it looks down the... Um, down the list and it sees this target right here main.o so that's a match and so then it says well what do I need in order to create the main uh, object file well the prerequisite is main.cpp so then it will look inside of the current directory for main.cpp and it will find it right there so it says okay I found main.cpp so now I'm ready to execute the command and the command that will take place on the command line is g++ dash c main.cpp. So this is the command to invoke the g++ compiler. And dash c means produce an object file. And so this, this particular command will result in the creation of main.o. And so now when we go back up to our initial target, this requirement to compile program has been met, right? Main.o will now exist inside of the current directory. So then it will move on to the next uh,
prerequisite and it will say well is there a function 1.0 inside of the the main directory well the answer is no so it repeats the process it says well here's the prerequisite that i needed um, i'm going to look for this file in the in the current directory and it's going to find it so then it will invoke this command same thing for function 2.0 right um, it will it will execute this command now we will have a function 2 object file, a function 1 object file, and the main object file. So all three of the prerequisites will have been met. So now we can go ahead and create the program. So we can compile the main.o, the function 1.0, and function 2.0. Dash o means create the program, that's, and um, that will be the name of the program that's created. Remember that if I leave off this part, dash O program, it will automatically just create an A dot out program. All right, so let's go ahead and um, I removed main dot O, so let's, let's go ahead and verify that um, I got rid of main dot O. So now we just have our uh, source code files, our header file, and the make file. Okay, so let me go ahead and type make and we'll see what it does. Okay, so it's it it says it need it wants to compile uh, G plus plus dash C main dot CPP. Okay. Um, that created the object file for main, then it created the object file for function one, then it created the object file for function two. Then it went ahead and compiled that program. So let's take a look at what we now have inside of our directory. Okay, so we have the object files and the source code files. All right, let's say that I only want to update one of my files. So let's just go ahead and make a change to main.o. So nano main, I'm sorry, not .o, main.cpp. Okay, so I'm not gonna really change anything. I'm just gonna trick the program into thinking that, that I've updated it. Okay, so now if we take a look at the timestamp again, we can see the current time on main.cpp is October 28th at uh, 2.38. So the time has changed from the previous version. The previous version was saved in October of 2015. So now make is going to keep track of that and it's going to say, oh, there's been a change in main.cpp. So watch what happens when I type make again. It only needs to update main.cpp because this is the only one that changed. Um, so it, up, it got a new object file for main. Um, and so then it went ahead and recompiled the program. It didn't have to recompile function one or function two, the source code files for those, uh, for those object files. If I type make now, then um, there's nothing to do because none of the files have changed, right? So the program doesn't have to be rebuilt. So without a change, then um, there's no need to, uh, to update the program. Okay, so let's take one more look at the um, uh, make file. So the way it works is we have our targets and then we have our prerequisites. And the, the command to, to um, once, once our prerequisites are uh, satisfied, this command has to be indented with a tab right here so um, this this is a tab right there so you can see that when I selected it the entire thing became blue it's it's not a sequence of spaces it's an entire tab so make sure that you tab over when you create your commands to make your targets you might have noticed okay. that there is a clean target um, inside of the make file and that is so we can um, get rid of the items that are temporary or, or that are not needed anymore. So let's say we're happy with our program and we're just going to be using it. Um, it works well. We don't need to modify it anymore. Basically it's done. 
So what we can do is we can um, invoke the target that, that we want, and which, which is clean. So let's take a look at what we have inside of our directory again. We have our source code files, and then we have our object files, and then we have our program and our make file. Basically, we, we definitely don't want to remove our code files, but these object files aren't really necessary anymore because we compiled our program and we're happy with it. So what we can do is we can say make clean. And um, basically any target that I list after make, um, the, the make program will execute that particular one. So if we take a look at our... Um, make file again we can see that we have uh, main.cpp so if I wanted to um, just update one of the object files I could say um, make main.o and, and then that would um, execute that particular target I could also do the same for the other uh, functions function 1 and function 2 um, or I could say make program if I wanted to um, the other thing, well, and, uh, and all, can't forget all. So, um, and remember that if I leave all off, then it's automatic. Okay, so basically what I want to do is make clean. And if we take a look at it, RM stands for remove. And so it's going to remove main.o, function 1.0, and function 2.0. So let's go ahead and make clean. And if we do um, ls-l again, we can see that it cleaned up our... Um, our project directory. Okay, thanks.